Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dr. Mohit Chaudhary. This is TransConnect, May 2020-25. Today, we'll be talking about a very famous drug used in multiple myeloma refractory patients, often called as DARA or DARA tumor map on blood bank serology and how it interferes with our testing. So uh, I'll start with the case. There is a 50-year-old male uh, patient of multiple myeloma whose screen came positive, DCT is negative, auto control is negative, and this is how the screen look like. So there is pan reactivity, weak reactivity at, at around 2 plus in all the panels. So what we did was we, since there was a history of DARA, we treated it with DTT. And after that, this is the result, the screen came negative. So we could solve this case and provide the compatible blood. Another case, 35 year old female screen was positive, no history of transfusion or pregnancy. Here DCT is negative, auto control is again negative. Pan reactivity. We could see it could be because of some high frequency antigen we thought uh, or maybe because of uh, but the auto control and DCT is negative. So we didn't think of AIHA. So uh, there was no history. So we did the uh, extended panel and we found that all of them were positive and the reaction strength was 2 plus. So pan reactivity, uh, weak pan reactivity was seen. We went ahead and uh, took the history and we found that the patient was a case of multiple myeloma and uh, was given DARA tumor map. So once that was known, we thought of uh, going with a DTT treated screen, which came negative and the DTT treated uh, uh, cells were used as the donor cells, which and the cross match came compatible and we were able to issue the blood. Another case, 45 year old male screen pan positive. Now here DCT and auto control are both positive. Patient was on daratumumab map and uh, DTD treated cells, even after uh, DTD treatment gave pan positivity and auto control was 2 plus positive then. So you can see that on the right side, the whole panel is positive. There's auto control that is positive, DCT that is 3 plus. So if it was just because of DARA, obviously the screen should have been negative after the DTD treatment. So we went ahead with the DTT, DTT treated 16 cell panel and that also came pan positive. We found that we wanted to rule out autoantibodies and so an autoadsorption was done. There was no history of transfusion, so autoadsorption was possible. Autoadsorbed plasma screen became negative and we confirmed the case as presence of warm autoantibodies. So all these three cases depict the pattern of pan reactivity in the antibody screen. So let's just reiterate what pan reactivity can take us to. So pan reactivity with an auto control, negative or positive is very important. So auto control is a very important test here. So auto control, if it is positive, then the modalities that can happen or the, the pathology that you're looking for could be a warm auto antibody, a cold auto antibody, or interference from monoclonal antibodies. However, an autocontrol is negative, it could be interference from monoclonal antibody or an antibody to high incidence antigen. So you can see interference from monoclonal antibody can occur in both autocontrol positive or negative cases, but essentially an autocontrol negativity rules out any autoantibody. So negative autocontrol effectively rules out warm and cold autoantibody and the differentiation between antibody towards high incidence antigen and daratumab is the one that is left after that. And we can do that with some special investigations or technique that are done in the transfusion laboratory. So coming to what monoclonal antibodies can do, these are the therapeutic modalities that are used to treat patients with myeloma and other hematological malignancies. And their use is ever increasing. It is likely that these patients will need regular transfusion support and depending upon the nature of monoclonal antibodies, these drugs may interfere with the pre-transfusion testing. So what are the drugs that are presently involved? We all have been listening about anti-CD38, that is Dara Tumamab or Dara Flex or Dara uh, in a layman's term. Or you can have a sister concern like Isatuximab for multiple myeloma, that is also anti-CD38. 
and another drug which is anti CD47 is used in acute myeloid leukemia and myelodysplastic syndrome called as Camellia is also in the question now. So how does daratumumab mediated anti-tumor activity happen? There are three main mechanisms. It can cause a complement dependent uh, cytotoxicity and uh, second is the antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity and the third is the antibody dependent cellular phagocytosis. All three of these mechanisms can take part in the anti-tumor activity of the daratumumab. So where does this CD38 actually occur? This is a protein that is ubiquitously expressed on myeloma and lymphoma cells but expressed at low level in normal lymphoid and myeloid cells. So it is expressed basically on the RBCs uh, not at very high quantity compared to the lymphoma myeloma cells but they are there and that is why you get a strength of 2 plus in your reaction. So medullary thymocytes, activated T and B cells, NK cells, monocytes, granulocytes, others. So this daratumumab or the anti-CD38 combines to the CD38 that is present on the RBCs and this can lead to when we add an anti-human globulin or a secondary antibody, this can give a positive or a false positive result. So the problem that occurs in the serology is that interference of the daratumumab in the assays that use secondary anti-human IgG antibody for amplification of signal such as the AG phase of the red cell screen. So this Routine blood screening in the blood bank revealed uniformly positive results from the indirect antiglobulin test in daratumumab treated patients. There is no interference is associated with ABO and RH group. Although the DAT is variable, why it is variable is because the anti-CD38 that, that actually is attached to the CD38, it makes the CD38 proteins weak or almost inhibits them. So many a times DAT comes negative it may or may not come positive also. So daratumumab mediated positive ICT. Another problem is that it persists for up to six months after the last daratumumab infusion. So this not only, you know, you are, there is, un, there is masking of the underlying clinically significant alloantibody if it is present. Whenever it is present, like you have a pan positivity, you're not able to, you feel that it could be an autoantibody. Secondly, sometimes an additional testing and potential delay happens and this causes unnecessary delays in transfusion of the blood when a patient requires the blood. So this is how it has happened. So uh, the figure A, if you see, there is no antibody, so negative IIT. But figure two, there is an antibody and which combines the red cell. You add a Coombs reagent. There is an agglutination, so this is a positive IAT that happens in a positive IAT case. Case C, if you see, there is no antibody, but it's the daratumumab which binds the CD38 on the red cells. You add a Coombs reagent and it gives an agglutination, but this is a false positive IAT. And this is what we are all trying to negate here. So what are the mitigation strategies? One of the most important thing is that if you are informed before, the clinician gives you a report that, okay, the patient is going to be started on a daratumumab or other monoclonal antibody. Then it is recommended that you start with the type and screen process before the treatment begins. You can do all the testing that is required. You can have the baseline investigation. You can do a phenotype. All of that is possible before the daratumumab treatment actually begins. But once it is there and you now it is already coated, now the treating RBCs or the donor RBCs are actually treated with DTT, which disrupts the daratumumab binding. This allows antibody screening and the cross match to be done. There are other agents that can use be used. AET is another agent that actually uh, is used as a reducing agent. Clipsin can be used. It clips the CD38 that is present on the RBCs itself. And the problem with that is both DTT, trypsin. Uh, also removes the Kel antigen uh, with their treatment. So DDD not only denatures the Kel antigen, but it also has implication on other antigens like Lutheran, Cartwright, JMH, NOPS, LW, Cromer, Indian and Dombrock system. So all of these are affected, but most important and most prevalent is the Kel antigen, and that is what we are worried about. That is why we actually give Kel negative units whenever we are doing treatment with DDT. Now, DTT treatment of region RBCs, it has been identified compared to others. It is most simple and efficient to circumvent 
this interference and thus to guarantee a faster and a safer transfer. Other things you can do is you can do a genotyping. Obviously, that will that is uh, done on the molecular level, so you don't have to you know wait for the serological uh, testing to be performed. Or you can do a phenotyping, but this needs to be done before the administration of the drug. You can also do a idiotype antibody, which can actually uh, uh, was able to restore the ICT test or a soluble CD38 to the patient serum sample can be added. Use of cord cells has also been shown to actually uh, give the right results. Why? Because the cord cells do not have CD38 on them. So that can be used as a uh, cell panel. So this is the picture that actually denotes the pre and post TTT treatment of region red cells. Uh, one and two on the left side, you see these are untreated cells. These are the treated cells with DTT. You can see the IIT is positive in one and two, whereas it is negative in one and two after the DTT treatment. These are the control cells with anti E and anti K. You can see that the anti E is retained because that's not uh, denatured by the DTT treatment, but gel is denatured, and that's why anti K is negative here in this uh, right sided panel. So, practical approach before data tumor map, we should type and screen for Kel antigen and other antigens. After data tumor map treatment, we can use the DTT treatment and we can provide Kel negative blood if need be. So not only the dead cell antibody screening assay is affected, there are other assays that are affected, which include anti-neutrophil antibody testing, anti-platelet antibody testing, platelet cross match, and any other test that use secondary anti-human antibodies. This is our paper on daratumor map, which explains the perplexity in immunometology with emerging horizons in myeloma therapy. So uh, we had this case and uh, we have, this has been published in the AJTS uh, long time back. So thank you so much. I hope this small lecture will actually sensitize you about the monoclonal antibodies and what we are up against. We have to an extent tame them, but I think it requires very important support from the clinicians who have to give us a history. Otherwise, we are not magicians that we will know that the patient is already on daratumumab map and we have to treat them with the DTT. So thank you so much. If there are other questions, please uh, DM me or write it on the chat box.